Hi there, welcome back. Well, here's the start of another project, a little different from the last one. I like to alternate, as you've noticed. Now, anybody who's been following my channel for any time will know that I'm a particular fan of brown. I say this every time I start a brown project, but uh, it's true. I love the uh, design. This particular one is a Reggie 450S. It's a tuner amplifier. There are a few uh, little interesting particulars like uh, rumble filters and things like that, which I thought would make uh, an interesting project. And to answer my friend Derek's question, yes, I've been saving this one for, uh, <laughs> for a rainy day or for a corona day. So uh, yeah, uh, it'll keep you busy for a while and I hope you enjoy it. Now, I... Um, always find these designs quite interesting and so far I've been lucky in that uh, schematics have been available and I haven't had too many problems with uh, deciphering the German. Some of them, like the T1000, I actually found the schematic in English as well. Now this thing is from, I believe, 1975 and the schematics that I've found are all in German. Now they're pretty extensive. There's a lot of information on them but it's all in German. So I think part of the uh, interesting part of this project for me will be trying to figure out whether I'll uh, get by with my translation skills or my limited knowledge of the language. Now starting on the left here we've got the uh, on and off switch, the green one. That diff quadro, I have no idea what that means. There are two outputs for headphones. There are the two speaker selectors, speaker set one and two. And then we have a mono switch, stereo switch, rumble filter, Rauch's filter, which I believe would be, what, a high filter maybe? Ubernarme, Ubernarme. No idea what that means. The uh, indicator there will probably be a tuning indicator. And if we go down to the bottom, we've got FM, UKW, the red one. KW is short wave, medium wave, long wave, phono. Band and monitor. Hmm. We'll figure out what that means soon enough. There's a stereo indicator. On the top here, there's one, two, three, six presets, or five presets, I believe. There's an AFC switch. Loudspeaker, volume. That's the volume. The balance. Highs and lows. And then, of course, the tuning knob. So it looks pretty straightforward. The... Um, Long wave goes from 145 to 340 on the dial. The medium wave from about 500 kilohertz to 1.6 something megahertz. The short wave, what is that, 5.6 or so to 7 point something megahertz. So it's not the full range. That's fine. It'll catch 49 meter band and the uh, 41 meter band. And then FM goes from 88 to 104. That's quite usual. Sometimes they go to 108, sometimes they go to 102, and the older ones just go to 100. So, fair enough, it's not in bad condition. There are a few scruff marks here and there, some cleaning is necessary. Let's have a quick look at the back. Okay, nothing too unusual here. You've got the antenna sockets, one for the FM dipole. The other underneath is for the uh, AM antenna. There's the antenna and the ground. And here we have the monitor, band, and phono. So monitor would be maybe a monitor out, not sure. Band is definitely a tape. That just answers the question I raised on the front panel. And phono, obviously. These fins over here seem to indicate that the transistors will be behind that because it's uh, designed to let in some air. And here we have the speaker outputs. The rechts is right, links is left. And what is that? Speaker one and two. Okay. Speakers one and two on the bottom, left and right. And then on the top, it's Hinton. What is that? Oh, well, I have to figure that out. Maybe it's just sort of satellite speakers. We'll figure it out. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't have too much of a problem switching this thing on because I've got the dim bulb tester and that tends to save it from any uh, short circuit. But I noticed something when I picked it up. There's 
now it's not shaking anymore. There is something sliding around in there, which means I, uh, I need to open it up. And I've actually taken the screws out and I can't see it. It's on the underside. So before powering this up, I need to open it up and um, see what we have inside, see what's floating around and hope it doesn't mean something particularly serious. Okay, the top's off and um, it doesn't look too bad in here. A little bit of dust, no big deal. Now, what I've noticed straight away is that the, they've got these orange caps, which raised quite a stir in the restoration of the uh, Bang & Olufsen I did recently. Those orange caps were in perfect condition. They're the uh, REO or ROE Rodestein. They were as good as new, but this one's got a difference. This one's got the brown ones as well. See, they're the orange ones. These are the brown ones. Now, I've come across these brown ones on the in the restoration of the quad um, amplifiers, and they were always in very, very bad shape. Quite a few axials here. Not sure what brand they are. Most of these will probably be requiring changeover. Oh yeah, I can see something. I'll get to that in a second. We've obviously got the the power supply and amplifier over here. There's a, what is that? Mm, not sure what that is there. Quite a few little uh, satellite boards plugged on here. The uh, tone controls over there. This will be the, uh, the IF section. So there'll be some RF over here. That's turning. That'll be... Well, this is making a heck of a lot of noise. So something's scraping in here. These are the presets. So until I get into a schematic and start looking at more details, I'm not sure what some of these things are, which is fine. But I did notice something right away. Let's have a closer look. That guy there is completely burnt out. That's next to a transistor here. That one looks a little bit dark, which might be a problem with heat, but that one is just basically fizzled. So we've got something definitely wrong there. Never mind, makes it more interesting. There are a hell of a lot of capacitors to change over here. There's quite a bit of wiring around here, so this will be interesting to to restore. I've got to remove a lot of that because all these capacitors are going to have to go. Definitely these electrolytics are going to have to go. And I notice a lot of the wiring, some of it is loomed, some of it flies around everywhere. <laughs> it just makes it more interesting. But um, yeah, all the switching happens down there. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking this is the condenser here. I can't really see too well but I think that's the condenser. I'm not sure how the FM is tuned. It could be Veracta tuning, but we'll get there. I'm not too worried about that. I just wanted to have a closer look and see what this thing reveals. That board goes under. There's a reflector board here. This is basically, I believe this is, yeah, this is cardboard. The two dial lamps over here. So that's obviously there to, to reflect on the plastic, sort of PVC uh, opaque uh, panel over there. That board under there, I believe, will be the preamp. It's got all the pots on there, the volume, left, right, highs and lows. Quite a few of the caps again. But that seems to be pretty self-standing. You've got one plug there to three plugs, and I think you can get that out, which is a good thing. Should be easy to work on. Just moving back, we've got another board with a couple of chips on here. SN7611, whatever that is. Not sure what that chip does. A couple of trimmer pots, lots of caps again. Over here, we'd probably have the IF. I might be talking crap, but I think this is the IF section with all the uh, IF transformers for alignment in here. It's probably the RF sections under these cans. Nothing too dramatic over here, a few trimmers. And this is where the power happens. I'm thinking that two of these must be the power supply 
filter caps and two might be the output uh, coupling caps. I don't know if this uses a dual supply or not, but I'm thinking that these two over here are actually the uh, coupling caps, which means that these transistors will work not uh, across the zero volts. It won't be at zero. It'll be somewhere at halfway the supply voltage. The four transistors are here, two for the left, two for the right. That'll be a PNP and PN and PNP and PN. I'm not even sure if they're original. They don't look like they've been worked on. In fact, unless I'm wrong, I don't think anything in here has been worked on, which is a good thing. The uh, power comes in here. There's a fuse, which I believe is accessed from the bottom. I'm not mistaken. There must be something at the bottom. We'll have to look. Quite a nice transformer. Nothing too dramatic. These are the speaker outs over here. I think those two at the top there are actually sort of treble speakers because I see an 8.2 ohm resistor over here across the two. Yeah, it might be sort of a common treble speaker. Not sure. And then the switching here for the speakers is done remotely. You've got that extender over there. Now we'll see if we've got access from the underside. Well, I think the underside will come off quite easy. I see a couple of uh, four screws, five screws. This one foot is broken, but I think that's uh, one of the pieces I found lying around in there. There's the fuse holder, which is, which is loose. Maybe part of that is floating around inside. That's what making, that's what's probably making the noise. We'll see. So I'll take those out and it looks like we've got access to the underside of the boards from here, which is great. First of all, this is what I found floating around on the underside. It seems to be a bit of shielding for something. So we'll put that aside. Good thing I didn't switch it on. Put that aside and get back to it later. Okay, here's a transformer. There's the fuse and the fuse is just very loose. There, I believe there should be a voltage selector here, but it doesn't seem to be. This must be wired straight into 220. This looks like a typical opening for one of those uh, round uh, voltage selectors. That board is angled, but it's completely accessible, which is great. It doesn't look like it's been worked on. This one also sort of looks original. A bit of botched solder, but I think that's old. And here, all these boards are different colors, or just about. Quite interesting. That looks original. That looks fine. This one is loose. I'm wondering if it's supposed to be. But no, it's, it's actually come out of here. I can see it's come out of its... Uh... Oh boy. I think this thing got a knock because I could see a little bit of denting on the top part. Oh, see at the top there. It's actually got a dent. This thing looks like this board has come loose. What is this? I see something strange. Very strange. There are solder pads that seem to have been ripped off here, but I think this is original. It's just a bit strange. No, definitely. There's some track. Some of these tracks have gone off. I can see a piece of track floating around there. I wonder what that means. That track seems to be gone. That one is gone. How the hell did this happen? Well, this might be a challenge. I'm going to have to look at the schematic and see how detailed they are. Because this is not good. <laughs> This is not good. This is the radio section, and I see a lot of these tracks have come off, but again, as I said, this board, yep, yeah, it's definitely come out. I think somebody took this board out. It's out of there, and it's also out of those two hooks over there. I think someone took this board out. Well, that could be quite an interesting one. We shall see. That's definitely been removed. That whole board is sort of coming up. So that's been removed. 
Shouldn't be too much of a problem. <laughs> I hope I don't uh, have to eat my words later on. But yeah, that's the first look. And um, quite frankly, I'm definitely not going to switch this on before I check power, make sure we have no shorts. And I'll take as much time as I need. A lot of it will be trying to understand what's going on reading the uh, service manual, which is always a bit of a challenge when it's not in your own language. But Google Translate is fantastic, and so are some of my uh, subscribers and friends who have offered their services. You're on call, guys. I'm going to leave this, uh, this one short and sweet. I hope you uh, join me for this restoration, repair. I want to get this thing actually... Nicely done up and probably come into use. I like uh, brown. I haven't had one of these before. And um, this is one like one of those singing competitions where every new contender sort of fights one of the existing ones to be put into competition. So I don't know which one will have to be put away. Maybe the Bang & Olufsen. Who knows? We'll see what this comes out like. Right. Hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you'll enjoy the series. I have no idea what's, what's going to come from this. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please click like and share it on social media, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.